Last time I left you with the calves calling their mamas and the mamas calling the calves. But what I was about to show you is the rye in the trenches and how all the other plants that we seeded are growing. So now this time we are going to do this. Welcome back to Gran Camito in the Pedroche Valley of Andalusia, Spain. So this is CT4 where we seed it into straw and that looks like this. So this is all the grasses that came up and as you can see they are going to seed and they will now go in and have a look at the swales or at the trenches there where we placed some rye. Let's see how that looks like. When I do this they kind of get angry. <laughs> because they want to follow me. But no, they cannot. This is their way of saying, where can I grace? Open a paddock. But the bad thing is, I have the power. And now, my power decides that I want to protect the grasses. And you have to wait. This is how it goes. But I think they are having a pretty good life. Despite all the protest. We can very clearly see where we managed to seed something and where we did it. So there is a very sharp contrast between left and right. So here is the rye in the trenches. And I can clearly see some seed heads. So this now wants to go up. And that is good. Let's look around how the others look like. So the trench continues to stay green, so that means they are growing. This might be the lesser developed trench, or the rye actually, but it's there. And I can see there in the distance, at the far end, that there's more of it. So it might just be that a lot less seed fell into this part here in front of me, but over there it looks similar like the others. And also we need to keep in mind that there has been no other irrigation than the rain. And depending on irrigation and on shade and sunlight and all this, they have developed to a different height. But it's for biomass, not so that we have a grain harvest. But once we work with picks, we can actually turn this around and go for a grain harvest so that we have rye as pig feed. This is an option in the future, but this is not next year. But it is on that very long list of things that we might be doing at some point. This is a very interesting journey. And by the way, this here, where you can see two tire tracks, this used to be a path, a road, that the previous owner used to come up to the high part, which is there. And of course, we can clearly see that the erosion there, the erosion, was definitely stronger than in other places. And we placed our road here so that it makes a zigzag. And of course we will also have erosion here, but this is an area where the erosion was already there. And the idea is to plant some rows of wetiware below so that whatever comes out 
uh, whatever comes down from above will be stopped except in the immediate curve and something like that is already in place so this is also to redirect it or catch the material and behind there is a little hole and this hole is filled with water they are most definitely not interested in any of the straw and I don't blame them but once the material that they can find here is gone maybe later today or tomorrow in the morning then they will continue grazing on the straw but it's perfectly fine It appears that all these paddocks that we just overflew are in dire need of a pick treatment so they come back the same way as City One did. Let's look at a still image and plan the next moves. Keep in mind that this, as always, is a plan and we need to adapt it once we get in contact with reality. Plans are not commitments. Here we have an overview of CT1 and the surrounding areas. You can see in the north the swale with the two integrated ponds, and also the two areas we had the bovines work on compost for us. The darker brown area is where we took away the material to cover the broad bean seeds that we brought out on the berm of the big swale. On the morning I flew the drone I wanted to give the guys in the field some guidance as how the grazing should go so that later the areas where the mules should till and we want to seed are well grazed off. These images are now rotated to show more detail. This is the first zone with the red line depicting its boundary. The arrow indicates that the material from the beginning of the arrow should be brought to where it is pointing to. Again in the second area the red lines depict the boundaries for the grazing and we want to till in the areas where there are no plants. And finally, in the third zone, grazing is also marked by the red lines and the arrow indicates that the material should be moved as shown. In preparation of the work with the mules that we want to do and the seeding in here, the guys put up that string of poly wire in order to get the bovine family in for some grazing so that we can better see where we want to till and seed. The area, as you might remember, has celebrated a very well comeback with lots of forage and this part down there we want to keep off limits for the time being and up here we want to have them graze so that is the plan we don't expect a very um, yeah special kind of grazing it's basically just Instead of us destroying the forage that is there, we better feed it to the animals and then we can bring in the machine and move some things around. This whole area has a lot more forage than what was visible in the aerial image that I showed in the last video. So the idea of tilling and seeding here might not be the very best one. But we do have the seed and we want to try this in order to have some forage during summer. So they will come into this lane, graze along it and then will be directed towards the end of this area. And there we will let them fan out a little bit 
because that is also where the majority of all the rocks are and the idea is to try the rake after the forage has been eaten. At the time of taking the drone shots, this had no grass and now it does. This here is the berm of the integrated pond and all the area below, like here in front of me, is very wet. And that is why we think that we should do this, not in order to stuck to a plan, but because there is wetness here. And that wetness should then bring the mix of corn and sunflowers into the summer without irrigation, because we have the irrigation right here. Plus, there is this area down there where they made compost. And this area is now also seeing plants, but on the other hand, this material we can distribute and put it to better use instead of just uh, letting it sit there. Of course, it will turn into soil in this place, but um, it's better to spread it out. And the idea is to move it into this area here, all that, after the cows have grazed off the existing forage. And then we can seed the mix of uh, corn and sunflowers. But then it is almost a crime to replace this, what has come up on its own, but it will come up again. Of course, now I wish that the situation were a little bit different. But this is now our best option and there are some areas like this where a lot of yeah, soil in progress is. It's not yet developed and yeah, it's always difficult. So here they come. can see the guys there. They will direct them in. The guys also set up a few flexible fence posts here in advance so that the string can then be moved. Now this is about getting them into the back of this, basically towards me and I will now remove myself here, not to make it harder. And this area is not that wonderful. So there are plants, but there's also a lot of empty space. And if you look at this part of the berm here, despite the fact that we have the broad beans there, there is a lot of plant material missing. So to destroy is a little bit and put something that suits us better for the summer isn't really a big mistake. After all, we will do this going forward many, many, many times. So this is just the beginning of this technique. Interesting to note is also that this area is quite poor in comparison because the swale here on the left side is never filled. This is the beginning of the swale and we made it high so that any water that flows downhill from on our property will not go into the neighbor's land but instead accumulate in the pond which is further there to the right, so here in the background you might actually spot a little bit of the water. So this is poor and putting something new here will certainly improve it. And by now they have arrived and now they should be bunched up. So they start eating right here and then step by step go further into the other parts that are down there.
No sé si le cayeron una tormentita hoy. Grazing in this area took a lot longer than expected, and so we continue this the next morning. As you can see, they are not bunched up. The reason is that the mules are about to arrive and the guys need to help unload and prepare a few other things. So there is no opportunity to bunch them up. But in the area that we will see in a second, you can clearly see what they have achieved and you can also see that the soil there is definitely a lot poorer than in the part where they are now. This is how the grazing looks like from the ground perspective. Well, at least we got unstuck, so that's a good thing. One of the things we wanted to achieve before the arrival of the mules is to rake some of the stones into contour lines. So we now know how it looks like on the inside. But then of course this is right there where the water comes out of it. But somehow, this place needs to be crossed. And down there, it would be equally as wet. Based on the hoof marks and how the ground looks like, the guys were certain that they can pass. Thank you. 
at least we now know that this definitely is a lot more moist than it used to be unfortunately our plan to move the stones has definitely fallen into water so this is not going to happen we will now try to move the machine to the entrance where it is a lot drier and maybe we can distribute the yeah the raw compost that we have there a little bit and now it's a question that the mules come back as quickly as possible to finish the job because there is no more rain in the forecast The plan was to get to this side here and then work with those stones. But that's impossible because this is all wet. And it is working as intended, so there will be no stone lines on contour here. You might say that this is to be expected, and yes, you are right, but the problem is there is no other way to get from there to here where we wanted to work. So, just right at the end and the wrong moment. So, he's now trying to get out, and we will cancel this attempt because it makes no sense. No, 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 que han saltado las dos soldaduras, ya la hemos cuarteado. So, that invention wasn't very good. So, this does not work.
As this seems to be such great fun, I also get to try it. Now that we are stuck again and Juan did such a good job at grabbing the backhoe sideways, I handed the helm over to him to see how we get out of this now. This is the seat that we wanted to bring out before the arrival of the mules, just to save some time. And you see how saving time is looking.
Well, I think that was it for today. Please come back next time to see how we get finally out of this mess and how we achieve to seat. <laughs>